Hello everyone, welcome to this edition of Duty in Japan. Uh, so you got your orders to uh, Atsugi, and you want to figure out how to get some of your furry family members here as well. Well, let's start with the internet. Okay, now you want to open your web browser, whichever you like. And the uh, way I do this, I Google Camp Zoma. You can also put in the uh, the website, which is www.usarj.army.mil, and down at the bottom, just above the new link, the other links icon is uh, a button that says U.S. Army District Veterinary Command. Click on that. It bring it to their web page. Over on the left hand side, you'll see a, a green bar. Um, underneath the import pet, you'll see documents required. Go ahead and click on that. And that'll show you what documents are required. Now the, uh, the Zama website has a lot of good information, but for the most up-to-date up information, you want to go to the, uh, the Japanese animal quarantine website, which is if you go about halfway down the required documents page, you'll see a link that says www.maff.go.jp. Um, go ahead and click on that link and it'll bring you to the AQS website. With the AQS website over on the left hand side down towards, it's about the fourth from the bottom, it'll say quarantine regulations for uh, dogs and cats. Click on that. This web page has a lot of good information, um, but what we're going to talk about is actually the import from other regions. And this comes to a very easy to read page. Um, as you scroll through it, you'll be able to see um, almost illustrated what you need to do to bring your, your pets to Japan. You want to read this whole page. Uh, it's got a lot of good information and everything on this page is what your pets need to come to Japan. At the very bottom of the page is the forms that are required for their entry into Japan. It has their, uh, their FAVN uh, information, the rabies information, everything. Um, if you notice, one will be a notification form. That's the form you need to send before uh, your, your pets come to Japan. Um, you'll fill that out after you get your results back from the FAVN test. Uh, you need to make sure you pay attention to the, uh, the rabies vaccination requirements. It's a big deal for your, Japan does not have rabies and to keep it that way, uh, countries such as the US have, um, who have rabies, they, these are very strict procedures. Um, another thing I want to pay attention to is the 180 day quarantine period that's mandatory for your pets. Now pay attention to it because it actually states after they've started their fab test, not when you get your test results back, do they start the quarantine. So once you, once you start the test, once the, the blood is drawn, it's a 180, 180 day minimum quarantine period for your pets. Now that can be spent either in the States, in Japan, or a combination of both. If they do it strictly in Japan, they have to either be in the kennel while you're in Navy housing, uh, Navy lodge. But if you go to military, when you go to the housing, you move into your house, they can do their quarantine in the backyard. So it's kind of nice. Okay, once you get all your forms printed out, you wanna make sure you go back to the quarantine page, uh, the front page, and print out the procedure manual. You really need this. So this is a checkoff list of what you need for your pets to, receive, to come to Japan. Um, it's pretty simple, it's really in depth, but keep in mind, it's, it's about 10 pages long. So it's a pretty long checkoff list. You need to start all this at least seven months prior before you bring your pets to Japan. And keep in mind, it's just not dogs and cats. All right, that's it for this edition of Juju Japan. I know it can be a long process, but it's worth it. And I hope you feel like I do, that it's good to have your family members around, your whole family, including the furry friends. All right, go on, guys.